So today I want to talk about Pokemon typing, and one flaw that I see with the current system that I think has a lot of people confused. Today I'm going to be talking about the type classification of Pokemon species from an in-universe standpoint, and why certain Pokemon feel mistyped for one reason or another. Namely, we're going to be focusing on the Dragon type. Let's step back for one second to analyze the problem that I'm pointing out today. If you look at most Pokemon types, the Pokemon under that type classification seems to fit within there fairly well. For example, most water type Pokemon seem like species that would inhabit a marine environment to some degree. Fire types seem like they incorporate some elements of heat, smoke, lava, or flames, either into their biology or their battle style. Bug types are more or less all physiologically arthropods or insects, with segmented bodies. And even more abstract types, like darker fairies, also seem largely unified, this time exclusively by their battle style, where their powers are drawn more from sinister attack styles or more folklorish powers that have to do with the moon, cosmic energy, or magic respectively. So with that in mind, it's safe to say that a Pokemon earns its typing through one of two primary manners. They either gain an elemental tie-in by virtue of living in an environment where that element is present, and they incorporate some physical attribute related to it into their anatomies. Good examples are the grass, fire, water, electric, ice, rock, bug, and ground types. The second method is when the typing, particularly the more abstract ones, are given when it's a good descriptor of the Pokémon's inherent abilities, behavior, or battle styles. Like what I said about the fairy or dark type. Though you could also say the second method usually defines psychic, fighting, and normal types as well. However, this typing method is admittedly a little more subjective, since you could make a case for a lot of Pokemon to have one of these abstract types as a secondary type. And the only reason they don't is because they're already dual typed through two of the physical attributes we talked about earlier. However, these two methods of typing generally checks out for the Pokemon types with one main exception, Dragon. If you look at the dragon type, there seems to be a few distinct outliers where it shows that the two type method that we came up with just now doesn't really work for the dragons as a whole. For example, there's a lot more dragon types that aren't morphologically dragons, in the sense of the word dragon, as a physically reptilian creature with either prehistoric or mythological origins. And there's a lot of Pokemon that actually are draconic in physical nature, but aren't a part of the dragon typing. The simple answer to all this is game design. I'm not going to question that from an external perspective. Like, Charizard is not a dragon type, and the obvious answer to that is because having one of the Kanto starters gain a dragon typing would give it an inherent advantage competitively, which defeats the point of a balanced trio. However, I think that we can look to some more interesting in-universe reasons to more clearly define what unites the dragon types, and properly excludes the non-dragon type reptiles. To do that, let's put ourselves in the shoes of a Pokemon researcher back in the Pokemon world's equivalent to the 18th century, when in the real world taxonomy was just becoming a thing. Back then, many living organisms were mistyped, for lack of a better word, and simply weren't reclassified until decades later when scientific understanding had simply advanced. For example, snakes and lizards were both placed under the classification of reptilia, which was due to their superficial similarities being cold-blooded, having scales, and non-live birth. However, with more recent genealogical studies, it's widely accepted that lizards are actually closer to modern birds on the evolutionary tree, which kinda muddles the term reptile, since that was only invented to classify organisms with similar physical characteristics. So maybe in the Pokemon world, the earliest dragon types that were discovered and scientifically classified were draconian physiologically, like the Dragonite line, the Salamence line, and the Kingdra line. All of these look like what is understood culturally to be a dragon. So maybe that typing came to be centered around Pokemon species who all somewhat looked draconian. However, as time went on, a greater understanding of types and genealogy occurred to the point where some Pokemon had to be reclassified type-wise, due to a better understanding of their characteristics, behaviors, battle styles, and of course their genetics. So maybe there was a robust classification of Pokemon in a phylogenetic evolutionary tree in modern times, the same way there is in the real world, made to prove that certain Pokemon are more closely related to Pokemon of different types, and weren't restricted to only evolving within the type classification. Like there are a bunch of feline Pokemon, all with vastly different modern typings, who all probably have been proven to evolve closer to one another than they did to Pokemon within their typings. For example, just because Persian is a normal type doesn't mean it evolved alongside Lickitung, for example. It's probably more related to other big cats like Pyroar or Luxray. 
So in modern times, instead of types being viewed as a way to physically classify Pokemon and explain their biological origins, types now are simply used to give context to the species characteristics in a completely different classification manner than a phylogenetic tree. Simply put, a Pokemon's typing has nothing to do with their genetic evolution. So instead of just referring to dragon type Pokemon, the type classification for dragon types in modern times is expanded to reflect everything else that defines what these Pokemon have in common, since obviously a lot of them don't look like dragons. Like Alolan Executor, Noivern, and Dragalge, I would say are more so unified by their battle style and their power levels, with the term dragon type in modern usage referring to Pokemon that draw their power from some sort of raw beast-like energy that's a lot more unstable and violent than other elements in the Pokemon world. So moves like Dragon Claw, Rage, Breath, and Pulse refer more to, again, the battle style and the power level than the fact that they're being used by a physical dragon. Because in many cases, these moves are used by Pokemon that just aren't dragons, either physically or type-wise. In the ancient Pokemon world before advanced science, Many probably only saw this level of energy being exuded by legendary dragons like Rayquaza or Giratina, which would explain why they classified Pokemon that looked like these godlike creatures and battled in the same way under the classification of dragon type. Plus, they probably placed Pokemon like Charizard, Tyranitar, Gyarados, and Salazzle under these loose classifications as well, just because they bore physical resemblance to these legendary creatures. Whereas, it took until modern science to know that these Pokemon, while physically reptilian or draconic, and may genetically be related to a bunch of modern dragon types, actually belong to other types themselves, because their power levels and primary methods of attack and defense don't use that beast-like energy, and instead draw from other elements, which is why they belong in the fire and water typings. So to summarize everything, I would say that while Pokemon does kind of have a completely different universe, and stuff that we're unfamiliar with from our real world, I would say that you could classify Pokemon under a very similar phylogenetic method similar to the real world. So types don't disprove Darwinian evolution and divergence from common ancestors for Pokemon. Instead, types can just be used as a supplemental method of classification that's completely separate from genetic classification. I could get more into this, but that's a topic for another day. So I hope this video was able to flesh out some more details about one thing in the Pokemon world that's intrigued and kind of bothered me for a long time. If there's anything we've learned, it's that this confusion would probably clear up if the dragon type was renamed to something like the legend or the beast type, or maybe the power type, or maybe something better than I could come up with. So let me know your ideas right down there in the comments. Anyway, this video was a ton of fun to make, and if you want to hear more of my opinions on Pokemon art and game design, subscribe to this channel, since that's a large bulk of what I do. Currently, I'm working on a Pokemon region of my own, the Arova region, which is based on California. If you want to see that playlist full of videos where I create my own Arovian Pokemon with original art and backstories, you can check out the link right down below. I'll be continuing that series next week. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time for more content.